We have looked at numerous examples of differences of the form t of n is equal to a times t of n by b plus f of n where a is greater than or equal to 1, b is greater than 1. Both a and b are constants. One question that arises here is, is it always possible to apply the master theorem to recurrences of this form? For all the examples that we saw, we could apply master theorem because we saw that when we compared n to the power log of a base b with f of n, the result was either case 1, case 2 or case 3 of master theorem. Case 1 was when f of n is in big O of n to the power log of a base b minus epsilon or f of n grows polynomially smaller than n to the power log of a base b. Case 2 was when f of n and n to the power log base b of a grow at the same rate and case 3 was when f of n grows at a faster rate f of n is polynomially larger than n to the power log base b of a. And of course there was the um, regularity condition. Which I won't mention here because we've looked at that in the previous videos. What I would like to do here is I would like to conceptually imagine a number line extending in both directions. This is a number line of functions. So you know what the number line is. You basically can represent real numbers along a number line where you have 0 as one of the points and all numbers that are greater than 0 appear to the right of 0 and all numbers less than 0 appear to the left and the number line extends from minus infinity to plus infinity. We could imagine a number line of functions where n to the power log of a to the base b is analogous to this 0. So this is sort of the central point along the number line and all functions that are asymptotically smaller than this function will appear to the left of this number line, uh, so to, to the left of this point along this number line. And all functions that are asymptotically larger than this function will appear to the right of this point along this number line. So if we look at functions that are polynomially smaller than this function. We could imagine them, we could imagine them as forming this particular, uh, as lying along this particular region of the number line. So all functions here, all functions along this number line here are functions of the form f of n which are polynomially smaller than log base b, n to the power log base b of a.
Likewise, we can imagine representing these functions which are polynomially larger than n to the power log base v of a by this region. So these are all the functions that are polynomially larger than n to the power log base b of a. And the functions at this point are functions that have the same rate of growth as this function. So at any point along the number line, you can have multiple functions lying at the same point, but then all those functions would have the same rate of growth. So they would basically be theta of each other. So unlike the real number line where we have only a single number at any uh, particular point, we can have an infinite number of functions at the same point. It's just that all those functions just differ from one another, either in their constant factor or maybe in their lower order terms, but they pretty much have the same asymptotic complexity. They are in theta of uh, one another. So this is how we are representing functions along this number line. So let me call this the, um, I would say, asymptotic, asymptotic uh, number line. So functions having a larger asymptotic complexity then this function are present to the right. Funct functions having the smaller asymptotic complexity than this function are represented or uh, will be present on the left of this point. Now once you have a function that is polynomially smaller than f of n, let's take this function over here. Let's say this function is polynomially smaller than n to the power log base b of a. Then every function that is that has a smaller that, that is smaller in terms of its asymptotic complexity than this function will also be present in this red region because if a function here is smaller than this function and if this function is polynomially smaller than n to the power log base b of a, then this function must also be polynomially smaller than n to the power log base b of a. Right? So the moment we have a function that is polynomially smaller than log n to the power log base b of a, everything to the left of that function will also be in the red region, which is why this red region extends indefinitely to the left. Likewise, this green region extends indefinitely to the right because once you have a function that is polynomially larger than this function, then every function that has a larger asymptotic complexity than this function will also be polynomially larger than this point or this function. So that's why we have represented the red region and the green region as extending indefinitely to the left and to the right once they start. Now I have denoted uh, these regions in such a way that there are gaps in the middle. So this is this is a gap here and this is another gap here. What I'm trying to indicate here is that there are functions in this region which are either 
smaller in their asymptotic complexity than this function or larger in their asymptotic complexity than this function, but not polynomially so. It is possible to have functions that are in big O of n to the power log base b of a over here, but which are not polynomially smaller than n to the power log base b of a. That is, if we if we cut off even a tiny amount of this power of n, that function will no longer remain in big O of whatever is inside. Similarly here, we can think of a function that is an omega of n to the power log base b of a, but which is not in omega of n to the power log base b of a plus any epsilon, no matter how small that epsilon is. Such functions are larger than n to the power log base b of a, but are not polynomially larger than n to the power log base b of a. So let's try to take a couple of examples, one each of a function in this gap and a function in this gap, which falls into neither of these three cases. So this is case one, this red region is case one. This black spot or this black point is case two and this green region is case 3. So there are plenty of functions which could fall into these gaps which fall into neither of these three cases. 